Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and in today's video we're taking a look at Universe Sandbox Square's new additions. One of them is in regards to the asteroid known as Apophis, one of them is about the second moon of our planet Earth, and a few more simulations have been added that actually allow you to explore our solar system in a little bit more detail. Anyway, let's take a look at those and welcome to What The Math. <laughs> So this is actually one of those uh, additional simulations where you get to kind of visually see what all of our planets look like together and uh, kind of also gives you an, um, a visual uh, comparison of the size here. But what I really like about the new addition is actually, well, it's kind of unofficially what I made uh, a video about a few uh, months ago, possibly like a year ago. And it's this simulation right here that's known as planets between Earth and the Moon. Now, this is officially... Uh, is based on this uh, JPEG that was going around Facebook that people were commenting on that basically placed all of the planets between the Earth and the Moon and it turns out that uh, they all fit very, very nicely inside. As a matter of fact, there's only like a few thousand kilometers left uh, right here somewhere. Yeah, right there. Um, if you were to place all of them together, so you can see that if you took a, basically place Mercury, Venus, Mars, Jupiter, um, Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune all together between Earth and the Moon, they would kind of fit almost perfectly together. Now, the interesting thing about this particular simulation, and this is something I should have done in my own simulation back in the days too, is that there's actually no gravity here. And so because of this, planets kind of just stay there. Uh, they also, I think, disable the uh, effects from various gravitational interactions, so things are not falling apart here. But I believe we can see what happens if you re-enable all of this by basically doing the following. We're just going to re-enable the gravity. Ready, steady, and go. So um, yeah, let's see what happens. I wonder if uh, I wonder if everything just kind of collides with Jupiter. Yep, there is Mars instant collision with Jupiter and I think everything else will probably as well. Uh, so that was pretty that was pretty cool. I, I think uh, I kind of like the how they added so many new simulations and they're constantly working on uh, this game like non-stop and you know it's been like a few years that I since I started using Universe Sandbox um, and they haven't really stopped working on it and even though it's still technically early access this is probably the only early access game I know of that I could totally trust uh, the developers to completely and totally finish one day and they are they've been constantly working on it So that one is cool, but let's talk about the other two simulations. One of them is the um, Very recent reanalysis of Apophis. This is an asteroid that was in the news back in 2004 And we thought it's going to collide with Earth at some point. Well, it turns out in 2029 It's going to pass relatively close. I'm gonna show you how close as a matter of fact, it might even hit a few satellites. Well, chance of it is very slim, but if we have more satellites in orbit, it might actually hit a few of them. It's going to pass at a distance of about 18,000 kilometers. This is uh, one of the closest approaches um, to Earth that we'll experience anytime soon. So this is how far it's going to be. And uh, because it's 162 meters in, um, in size, it's actually kind of dangerous. If it were to collide with Earth, it could possibly cause some serious uh, unpleasantries. Let's put them that way. Now, the chance of it colliding with the land is low, but it's more likely to hit the ocean. And this is what would happen if it were to actually uh, strike Earth and hit the ocean. Obviously, it would result in some major, major tsunami and possibly a big explosion as well. So uh, this actually could affect the coastal areas quite dramatically. And, okay, it wouldn't be as dramatic as you see here. I don't know what happened there. It's a little bit over-exaggerated. This is a Hollywood version of the collision. Uh, but it would definitely create some major um, disasters in the coastal areas around Earth and possibly even lower the global temperature a little bit because of the all of the dust that then starts reappearing in, um, in the atmosphere of our planet. And so we think maybe in 2029, there's a kind of a slight chance that it might possibly come close enough to our planet that it's going to shift its orbit, as you can see right here. And uh, in 2036, when it comes back, there's a slight chance that it might collide with Earth. Very slight. Very, 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 very slight. So don't uh, go panicking yet, but it's there. The chance is there. 
And then the other simulation they added is actually another video that I made previously. It's about the second uh, quasi-satellite of Earth known as 2016 um, HO3. Now, it was discovered in 2016, and it kind of actually orbits um, around Earth, but not specifically in a stable orbit where you would call it an actual satellite. But you can kind of see, if you were to, to go to Earth right here, if I were to accelerate time, it sort of uh, hovers in the same region. Now, it, it's uh, possibly going to actually disappear in the next few thousand years. Um, so it is not a permanent satellite of Earth, but it's definitely something that you could unofficially call a temporary second moon. And it's a rock. It's about um, 41 meters in size. Um, and what's interesting about it is that for the longest time, we actually thought this was possibly maybe... A, uh, a remainder of the uh, Apollo missions that sent the um, astronauts to, to the moon. And we thought that maybe this is one of the boosters or one of the stages that is, not the boosters. Um, and it turns out it's not. It turns out it's actually a rock. And you can see it's making this beautiful eight shape in our skies as it's following Earth around. But what's really cool about this particular simulation, and this is actually the reason we're going to explore this uh, again and again, is that this is, uh, this is a geocentric simulation. This is what people thought was happening in the world back in the days when we didn't think that Earth was orbiting the Sun. We actually thought that everything was orbiting Earth. And look at the patterns here. This is what we thought is happening in the skies. Everything here is basically orbiting around the planet Earth. I love this. This is so beautiful. This is a perfect representation of what it might look like if something is geocentric. All right, well, that's that's pretty cool. That's pretty awesome. Uh, and uh, the last simulation is actually also very cool. It's It uses your clock on your computer, and you can kind of see what time I'm making this video right now, uh, to show you the exact time and the exact place of everything in our solar system. And that's really, really useful for um, even like NASA scientists, because, you know, sometimes they just want to check things quickly. Uh, to see where Ceres is, for example, or, you know, where Voyager Probe 2 is. And I don't really know if it's in this simulation or not, but it's it can be. Uh, although the, uh, all of the moons and all of the um, dwarf planets are here. So you can actually go and find where um, Europa is, for example. Right now, right this instant, right this second. And there it is. It's right here. So that's pretty cool. So I really, really love these new additions. They definitely create... Uh, or add a lot more layers to the already complex Universe Sandbox Square. And this is definitely one of those games that I will always recommend to everyone. If you do want to check it out, uh, the link for where to get this is in the description below. And, um, you know, this since this is an early access made by a few people, it definitely helps them if you purchase their game. Anyway, so that's all I wanted to talk about in this video. kind of wanted to show you what has been added to the new version and uh, why you should probably consider it supporting this game as well. Anyway, let's finish this video by causing a major destruction of our solar system by basically exploding one of the planets. Well, let's just go with Jupiter. Thank you so much for watching. Come back tomorrow to learn something else. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Space out. And as always, bye bye. And it's very interesting how nothing actually got destroyed. It seems that uh, I needed to enable gravity to make things a little bit uh, more explosive. And also, I think the collisions are disabled here. So there's that too. But look at that. We actually have a leftover ring here. That's awesome.